Welcome to the Freezing Bear office. How many good deeds does a company or YouTuber need to do to remove them of criticism? I'm tired of everyone calling me a Mimi. And what do they need to do to cross that line where the public no longer wants to support them? So today I'm gonna to be kind of looking into that. We're not trying to criticism, we're not trying to criticism people. The whole point of this video isn't to criticize the examples in this video, but is to have a look at how other people have criticized them and how other people have stood up for them. I'm gonna be talking about YouTubers giving to charity, the established titles situation, and the whole Liver King situation. Let's start off with YouTubers. Mr. Right now, it's very popular for YouTubers to donate to charity, an act that is really great and kind. How much does donating to charity impact a YouTuber's reputation? I'm not saying all YouTubers that donate to charity are cynical or anything or disingenuous, but how far can that charitable image be pushed? You know, like when do they cross the line? I think a good example of this is the video I spend 100 hours in the world's poorest country, because while this video did receive quite a lot of criticism, there's a large group of people who support this video too, as seen by the like to dislike ratio. There's 47,000 people like this video and 71,000 people dislike the video. People criticize this video because it seemed like he was being disrespectful to the people who lived in that country. He wanted to get into the orphanage and film the poorest kids in the poorest country, which kind of came across that he's just trying to use them as content. I wanted to see the poorest people in the poorest country. So we went to the orphanage. Phidias really wants to go to the orphanage, but they're not letting him. He was pointing at people in fields as if they're kind of animals at the zoo. She's working here in the rain with this thing on here. They have their babies on their back and they're working. So a lot of people, including myself, thought that was a bit weird to put into a video. However, there's a lot of people who support him because he said that he's going to create this fundraiser and that he's matching donations up to $10,000 and that he wants to go back there and help out more people and, you know, by buying stuff for them and helping them out. So that's why we're here to make a fundraiser with the goal to raise $20,000. For every dollar that you donate, I will be matching the donations. I don't know the answer to this, but does being charitable outweigh being unself-aware? Like, where is that line? Both sides have perfectly good arguments. That's why I think Beast Philanthropy was a really good move for Mr. Beast because that whole channel is just about helping people. All the revenue from that channel goes right into helping people. So it's not like you're profiting in any way off of helping people. It's not like that ad revenue from him going and giving out, you know, school supplies or food to homeless people. You know, none of that money is going into his back pocket. It's going right back into his, you know, organization. It's that same question like, is it okay to, you know, film yourself donating to charity? Because you know you're gonna get a lot of views from that video because, you know, people like to watch those kind of videos. So is it okay to make videos where you're donating to charity, but you're also profiting from it? You know, I don't really know the answer to that. If you have any answers or any thoughts on this, comment it down below. I'm really interested in hearing. Let's now move on to the Liver King situation because I think this one's quite interesting. If you don't know about the Liver King, he's basically a guy who decided he wanted to live like the primal ancestral living style and eat only raw meat and advertise it as a really good way to become healthy and super, you know, strong and have lots of muscles and all that. You guys can see, see that we sleep on the ground. We have just a little box that I built just out of some wood. Along with that, he sells supplements that are part of that kind of lifestyle. And recently he's come under fire for admitting to taking steroids after lying about it for a long time now and kind of denying it on podcast after podcast. Never taken steroids, I've never done PEDs. Do you take steroids? Do you take PEDs? The answer to that is no. I've always told the truth, I still tell the truth. Then an email was leaked that showed that he was taking a lot of steroids and has been taking them for quite a while. His list looked like a fucking crafting thing from Fallout 3. Like, the fuck is all this? And that made a lot of people mad because he promoted this lifestyle of self-improvement and how you can achieve gains yourself. All you have to do is just follow my methods. If you don't feel good about yourself, you can change, you know? Which are good messages, you know? They're good messages, but messages that became meaningless when he became the one promoting an unreal body type, which he said he achieved naturally. So, you know, there'll be people who, you know, want to look like him, want to look strong like him, but then they try everything that he's done and they're not going to get the same gains as him because he's taking steroids. So he ended up making a response video. Yes, I've done steroids. Which quite a lot of people criticize for not really taking full accountability of the whole situation. You know, yes, he admitted to lying, but he added excuses on how he wanted to be, you know, helping mental health. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who 
So I made it my job to model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called Ancestral Living. He also said that his steroid use had no impact on his business. It was already successful before. The Liver King brand has had nothing or at least very little to do with my business success. My companies were already kicking ass. But a lot of people kind of disagree with this because he did have an image to uphold and you want to look like me? Look at how strong I am, you know? Take my supplements. So you may be thinking this is a cut and dry case, you know? He crossed the line, he lied to people, he misled people. Everybody must not like him anymore. That's actually not the case. If you look at the apology video, it actually almost has 60,000 likes on it. And there are multiple comments on there supporting him and kind of praising him for admitting what he did. You'll find comments like this. Bro, I'm subscribing now. Thanks for opening up, dude. That's one of the greatest signs of strength. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions, so there's nothing wrong with how this guy is feeling. It's cool when you look at it objectively, but if you're on one side, boy, can it be annoying. You're like, why do people think like this? My God, you know, what is going on? What is going on inside their head that makes them think like that? That's not the only comment, but wait, there's more. I don't hate you, man. Just like the other million YouTubers out there, you found a loop and used it. Screw it. It's life. Ceasing opportunities, your message was always genuine. So this guy sees the whole situation as a positive. The Liver King can reveal the truth and then move on. To the people taking the piss, I support Liver King. I understand what he's saying and think he has made a difference and has helped many people. So this guy is wanting people to remember the positive messages spread by the Liver King. Like, you know, you can improve yourself. So he's wanting people to kind of hold on to those messages and that the other stuff that's come out, that's okay. Just ignore it and keep on focusing on your own battles. So we got a bunch of different opinions here, you know, which is kind of who would have thought, you know, we're looking at YouTube comments. That's funny. We found different opinions. Wow. You know, nothing new there. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to give it a like. It really helps out how this video does. Now let's look at the established title situation. When you buy land in Scotland, you are legally referred to as a lord or lady. For those of you who don't know, established titles was a sponsor for many YouTubers and their ad kind of claimed that you could become a lord or lady by buying a novelty plot of land in Scotland. And you know, through their site, you could buy it and then you could have this certificate. But then recently a YouTuber made a video about how that company was basically a scam and how if you own a novelty plot of land in Scotland, you are not entitled to becoming a lord. And that was one of the main selling points that a lot of YouTubers talked about in their sponsorships. Their project based on the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords or ladies in English. You can do exactly that and become a lord or lady. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so they can call themselves a lord or a lady officially. So this caused a lot of YouTubers to cut ties with the company and even refund people who had bought stuff from the site, as well as making videos apologizing for misleading or scamming their viewers. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. But not all YouTubers made an apology. Some said that this was always a joke gift, a gag gift, you know, a gift that really shouldn't have been taken too seriously. A quick and easy gift to pick up for your uncle's birthday when you don't have anything else to get him. Because it's harmless and they're planting trees with your money. Established titles also would plant a tree for every order. Well, they'd actually donate money to an organization that planted trees, all under the premise of, you know, keeping the Scottish wilderness there and, you know, conservation efforts and all that. I have an update because the established title story keeps on evolving. A lot of people thought that established titles never said that you could legally change your name in any of their ads, but it turns out that on a lot of Instagram and Facebook ads, established titles was using the terms legally and officially, saying that you can legally change your name and you can change it on official documents and stuff like that. Actually, established title sells a title that can officially make you a lord or a lady. When you buy land in Scotland, you are legally referred to as a lord or a lady. Purchase a square foot of land in Scotland, which makes you an official lord. After doing this, you can actually change your surname title on your passport. When it turns out that that actually wasn't the case. So they were quite misleading in their marketing. So is that kind of misleading marketing okay? If you're doing charity work and you're helping plant trees, does that excuse the misleading marketing? For some people, it seems it does, and for others, not so much. So that's all I really wanted to talk about. I find these situations really interesting. Hope you found them interesting too. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and please subscribe.